Welcome everybody to the Daily Mastermind. I'm Paul Baxter with Mortgage Mastermind Group. Guys, girls, we are here today. We're going to talk about different presentation types, and I'll tell you why. I was having a conversation uh, not long ago with one of the one of my one-on-one -on -one coaching students, and we were talking about different ways to get agents to see you as different, to brand yourself as different. As you know, um, we, we talk about that quite a bit here with the Mortgage Mastermind Group. We covered it when we talk about the commitment letter and the realtor needs assessment. Those are both things that are designed to make you stand out, to differentiate yourself from the crowd because the reality of it is, is, is we're, as human beings, we typically stereotype groups of people. When you think about teachers, don't you get a mental image of what teachers you know who a teacher is in your mind when you think about the the people who are uh, attorneys you get a specific you know you get a specific stereotype of what that person is in your mind it's the same thing with realtors when they think about loan officers they see us you know they kind of put us in this pool we maybe don't all look the same but they put us in this pool and we're all bobbing up and down and our heads are all level until one of us stands up in the pool, now we look different. And, and we have to break that perception of being all the same with real estate agents in order to generate that opportunity to create and develop a referral partner relationship. You know, all the things that you do in marketing to differentiate yourself, all of those things are, are meant for one purpose and one purpose only, and that's just to, that's to give you an opportunity to develop and create that relationship. That's the beginning stage. And so what we're going to talk about today are some cool ways to get agents to see you as different, to look at you, to look upon you as an expert in something specific, something that you're talking about. And the and, and let's face it, you know, if if given a choice an agent has an opportunity to, you know, a lead comes through and they can refer it to the agent that they know that called them the other day or the the expert on FHA 203k loans? Should they call the agent that they've been working with or the expert on how to make this happen? You know, this specific loan type or whatever it is that, that you've branded yourself as an expert on. So that's what we're going to talk about today are some pres presentations to agents, some of the things that it does for you that is really important. It gives it, it, with presentations and the recommendation on this is you need to be if you're in the the mortgage business you need to be giving some kind of a presentation at least once a week because it brands you as an expert in whatever you're presenting on now that can be a meeting to a large group or a one-on-one -on -one meeting a, a, a presentation a week doesn't necessarily mean you're doing this group presentation it could be a one-on-one -on -one presentation that is a presentation the best results that we that I have found um, over the years is that groups of 10 or 12 make for the it maybe isn't the biggest presentation you'll ever do in your whole life but you will get the most impact out of it if you have just 10 or 12 attendees at your presentations because what it allows you to do is really go deeper and form more of a specific bond with each one of the people that are there because it's you're, you're not talking to this enormous group, you're talking to 10 or 12 people. Now it also, on the other side of it, the people who are attending, there is a much greater comfort level with those people. They feel more comfortable to engage or to say, you know, oh, I did that myself, or oh, hey, I tried it this way, if there's only a few people in the room, as opposed to having 20 or 30 in the room, people are less likely to share their experiences. Once you get somebody to share their experiences in these presentations, now you're developing a bond. You've created that ultimate goal, which is engagement, because they're sharing their experiences with you. You've created within them a feeling that, hey, this is the expert, and I feel comfortable sharing my experience because this guy knows what I'm going through, or girl, as the case may be. Um, but in the larger groups, you don't ever get that, that, that engagement. People feel less comfortable to share their own experiences, 
in a larger group than they do in a smaller group. It's a better bonding opportunity. And so if you're doing presentations or going to, it's, you know, one-on-ones are always great, but as far as the group presentations, uh, the, only, the only caveat to this rule is if you're going to be doing CE, uh, you know, continued education presentations, if you're going to do that, you want that room to be bigger. The key element there is to get that list of attendees prior to the actual CE presentation, and we'll cover this in a minute here. I'm kind of jumping ahead a little bit, but getting that list of attendees prior to the CE presentation so that you can go through and do some research and know who your players in the group, who are, who are the players that are going to be attending are, so that you know when you take your 15-minute breaks, you know who to focus your, your business time. You know who to focus your schmooze time with to get the most out of that opportunity because you only get uh, a few opportunities during that. And we'll cover that again. Like I said, we'll, we'll go deep into that in just a couple of minutes here. So there's lots of different presentation types. You could do a wine tasting. Um, I'm wondering, and if you've ever done one of these presentation types and you're on the call, please share with us your experience. I'd love to hear about it and read it to the other masterminds who have joined us. Um, so that everybody, you know, kind of share with what, what all's been happening or what you've been doing. Um, a, a local wine stores, um, total wine, most of your larger cities, and I know most of us on this call are in a city of, of some size that would be able to do this for you, has a local wine, uh, total wine store. Total wine will say yes every single time you ask them to do this. And they'll provide the wine, they'll provide the, the sommelier to pour the wine and taste it and talk about it. Basically, it's a salesperson. Um, but what that does is you, you, know, you invite a bunch of agents, you get 5 or 10 or 12 people there, you have 10 minutes to do a little presentation, and then you enjoy the wine tasting with your peers. And that's something fun for you guys to do. You're exchanging fun stuff. Oh, I like this one. Ooh, didn't care for that one. Oh, my goodness, this one's so sweet. It's an exchange of something fun in addition to you got that opportunity for that 10-minute commercial in the, in the beginning. And you just remind them. Hey, remember, I'm a mortgage guy first and foremost. Your referrals are always appreciated. You could do a coffee and questions, which would be like an early morning type of meeting where you brought coffee and danishes or donuts in, and you had just an open Q&A for your referral partners. You could literally tell them they can ask you any question that has anything to do with mortgages. You know, open the floor like that, what you're going to start hearing first and foremost are their pains. When agents get together, when two or three or five or six agents get together and you open a forum like that, what will happen is one agent will say something that a lender did that they think is funny that the whole group would because they're going to, you know, they're, they're in a group, it's, it's you with them. So they're going to make a joke about something that happened, but what, what you need to remember is that little, that little thing that they throw out there during this Q&A part is going to be a pain. It's going to be something that they have experienced that was a pain for them. So not only does it give you a chance to address that in front of the group, but it's also ammunition for going back and following up with those agents that do ask questions. Uh, you, can, you'll, you can ask questions about guidelines, uh, about you know, tax write-offs, VA. One of the things I want to make sure that you guys understand, and I probably should have included this little piece, and, and I thought about it after I wrote this slide on this PowerPoint. When you do something like this, a coffee in, in Danish, if you make it a Q&A, be prepared to prompt the Q&A. What I mean by that is you need to come prepared that if you make your announcement about, hey, questions are open, love to answer any questions that you got, and you hear crickets, you need to prepare yourself to be able to prompt them with some specific questions. And I recommend that you prepare that. If you are going to do this, you prepare that prior and know what you're going to prompt them with. Maybe it's questions about, hey, do you guys have questions about how to, how to market to your past database to get all those past clients and referrals to refer you more business? 
you know, if you've got questions about that, be happy to answer it. You can prompt that way. Um, you know, maybe some of you are working on video marketing and you need a little bit of help getting started with how to get your videos actually edited and put into a format where you can send them to your clients. Is anybody working on that? So be prepared to prompt them with questions, but I, 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 maybe I don't need to say it, but I'm going to say it anyway. Don't prompt with a question that you don't know the answer or how to, how to properly answer it or haven't prepared a good answer for that question. So only make prompts that you know exactly how you're going to answer that prompt because when you do a prompt, that's when those questions will start coming, um, especially in a group of people who don't necessarily know each other. Uh, you will need to do a you'll you'll need to prompt them on their questions. So that's the only little caveat on that qu coffee and questions deal. Is just make sure that you're prepared to prompt them on questions because a lot of times they're going to come there and they're going to look at you. You'll hear crickets when you say, "Okay, great. What questions do you have?" You'll hear crickets, and you want to be able to prompt those questions. Okay. Uh, lunch and learn. Everybody's heard of the old famous lunch and learn, the, the, the old standby. Host a luncheon for your referral partners and teach a subject. That's what a lunch and learn is. It's, it's sit them down with food in front of them and then do a presentation to them. Teach them a subject. Talk about how to, how to win expired listings or FISBO marketing. Do a presentation on database marketing, or with Lunch and Learns, what's cool about that is you can do presentations in Lunch and Learns that are specific to the mortgage business, that are specific to a specific niche product or something specific that you only have and you want to explain how it works. You know, really, really good way to be able to do those mortgage specific presentations is with a lunch and learn because you're feeding them that you're giving them something you know you've got them sat down you've got a nice big plate of food in front of them and you get an opportunity to to present your wares co-hosting that with a title rep will not only save you a little bit of money because you're partnering on the expense of it but a lot of times it can help you fill those seats um, and, and most restaurants are going to charge you an upfront number. You know, you're going to get a discount for number of heads. You know, for guaranteeing a certain number of heads, but you've got to pay for that number that you give them to achieve that discount. And so you want somebody to help you out getting more people into the seats to fill that number. There's nothing like paying for food that you didn't have somebody eat. That never feels good. Um, I mentioned earlier continuing education classes. Um, a really, really great way to get agents coming to you. Now, as I said, that's one of the few times that you don't have that opportunity to control the number of attendees the same way you would for a presentation that is not necessarily to, cre to get uh, continuing education credits. Okay, those people have to get that those continuing ed credits, so they're actively seeking the schools or the courses that they find to be interesting, so that they can get those CE credits knocked off and go about their lives in a merry way. Right? You can't limit that number. You need a big number of people in there because the thing about that is, is you can't target who's going to be in there with production numbers, you're going to get everybody that is a part-time real estate agent to the guy that's doing you know, 270 transactions a year or 270 sides a year. You're going to get everything in between. The key element there is, especially for those of you who have to do your CE credits through a certified school, um, each state is a little bit different. Um, like the state of Florida, I can I first have to go and become a certified CE school, and then I can become a certified CE instructor. So if I want to do my own CE certifications, I got to do school and instructor. I can get hooked up with the school. The school has to hire me to use me on their license, which is why lenders in this area become a school and become a licensed uh, teacher for CE credits to be able to do it here. It's just easier that way. Now, once I'm a CE school and a CE 
instructor in Florida, I can go to a school and they can put it on for me. I can utilize their classroom and their advertising platform, basically their website to announce my classes even though because all you do is you make a deal to give them the money for the class. You're not looking to get paid on the classes. That's not what it's about. It's about bringing the agents through the door. Um, there are other states that you, all you have to be is uh, you have to be you know you have to get the certification to do CE credit and uh, CE credit a licensed CE credit instructor in your state. That's most states. Um, like Texas, all you've got to do is be a CE instructor in Texas. You can go to any school. You can do it independently of the school. They don't mind either which way as long as you're a certified or a licensed CE instructor. I think Texas, it costs you a total of $75 if I'm not mistaken. Florida, it's going to cost you $25 to be an instructor and $125 to be a school, so $150 bucks total. Um, California, I remember looking into it. I believe it's $150 to be a CE certified instructor, but you do not have to be a school. You just have to have a school endorse you to get your instructor license. Most schools, the people that I know that have gone through this, you approach the school, they're more than happy to sponsor you or endorse you to get you to be an instructor because they're looking for courses anyway. That's how they make their money is, is you know, charging agents for these courses. They need more courses. Once you're approved with your state, the next sit setup is to get your, your, your class certified. Now there are many levels of CE certification credits. You can do for anywhere from two hour CE credits all the way up to I think they all you can do a 16 hour gizmo um, which is a lot um, if you're doing one class you're looking at the two hour deal if you're doing two or three classes in this certification you're looking at the three to six hour or you know all the way up to again the 16 hour ordeal most of what you're going to be doing you're looking at two hours of CE credits to get this information and you can get classes approved on everything from marketing ideas to specific loan programs um, and most things in between. Uh, they, they want the content from you. They want these marketing ideas. They want to educate the real estate agents in a diverse manner. So they're looking for you. They want these courses. All they want you to do is put them into a structure that makes sense for what they've got. You know, you've got it there, and they'll give you the guidelines how to create your outline, what you have to have in between on a two-hour one. I think you have to have two 15-minute breaks on a two-hour CE course, um, and things like that. And each state's a little bit different, but they will provide you with those guidelines. Okay. You can host a book of the month club, which is it's one of those, this is one of those that's going to be a smaller group that you're really, really going to go deep with the people in this group. Um, and you would meet at a local bookstore or a coffee bar once a month, you know, the first Tuesday of every month or something like that. And, and you would do books like business or wealth building books, things like Michael Mayer's Seven Levels of Communication. You can cover that and and talk to them about it. You could talk about um, by referral only, which is I can't, I can't remember the name of the author of that, but you know, lots of different books that are real estate related or motivational related that you can cover and and you know be the leader of that group. But that's going real deep because you get into those phil philosophical conversations when you're going over different books and things like that. Uh, do an appreciation breakfast. This is one you can't do that that very often. You know, maybe once a quarter or your quarterly appreciation breakfast. This isn't one you could mix in every month, uh, but you could do an appreciation breakfast at a title company or uh, at a local restaurant, whichever is easier. 
and invite all of your different partners. Invite your attorney partners, invite your you know, insurance partners, invite your real estate agents, invite you know, all of your different referral partner network and introduce them to each other. You'll create that. It's not like a BNI group. It's not that. It's it's different in that you're in a more relaxed environment. There's no pressure for leads or referrals or anything like that. But you're introducing them and you're creating that that kind of that core group there. Uh, cocktail parties are a fun one. I know lots of people like to do the cocktail parties or the happy hours. Um, host a happy hour every couple of uh, every couple of weeks or or even a, every couple of months, but you can do this one quite often because it's a fun thing to do. Uh, teach a short class or just hang out with the drinks and snacks. It's it's entirely up to you. Um, one of the things that you can do it does not necessarily have to be at a bar to be a cocktail party or a happy hour. You can host those at your office. You can host those at a title company's conference room. Uh, you could host those at a local restaurant if you want to, or even one of your business-to-business -business partners uh, will be more than happy to get people coming to their place of business to see what they have available. Um, you could certainly do it at a at a bar and become a regular at a bar and have it set up. You know, the whole nine yards. We used to it when I was in the restaurant business quite frequently. We we had a situation like that where the, it was a it was actually a title company that once a month they did a happy hour where they paid for uh, appetizers and everybody got a drink ticket when they walked through the door. And when they first started, they would get eight or ten people. But boy, oh boy, after a few months of this, we were getting 30, 40 people coming through the door each time they would do this event, um, which is a huge number. And their brand was on everything, their napkin. I mean, it was just – it was a really good event, and they it generated quite a bit of activity and conversation. So the cocktail parties – and they're fun. People talk about them after the fact. It's not just a – you know, a thing they went to and they never mentioned it again, especially if some fun stuff happens at the, at the happy hour. Um, dialing for dollars. This is a hard one to stomach, guys, because I know a lot of times it is not the most fun thing to do, but I will tell you, the brokers love this idea. So don't approach the individual agent with this idea. Only approach the brokers of the office with I, this idea. And what it is is you host a cold calling night. And the idea is you're, you're going to provide some some snacks and some drinks and you know party favors. You'd put balloons around and maybe even you know put put you know confetti and just fun stuff. Make it a party atmosphere for, with food and drinks. And the agents all get together with all of their leads in the, in in one evening and they just sit there and they start calling their leads and they're having fun with it, jumping up and down when good stuff happens. And you're there for to answer any questions or to do any pre-approvals that need to happen during the lead calling session or the dialing for dollars. It's a fun night. You can make it festive. The agents aren't going to like the idea of it in the beginning, but get them going in the festive mood. And, and once they start calling and getting some activity, things will start to, you know, be, that momentum starts to pick up. That could actually turn into some right now lean loans for you. Uh, doing that strategy, but that's a great strategy to approach the brokers with, even if they don't do it. It's an idea that you came up with to help them build their business. They'll look at you as somebody different. You're differentiating yourself uh, just in, in approaching the agents or the brokers with that idea. It, it makes you so different than everybody else that's approaching those brokers. You know, hey, I'd love to be your in-house guy. Hey. How about I help your agents make some more money? We'll do a dialing for dollars night. I'll sponsor the whole thing. We'll make it festive and fun. We'll come in here. We'll call a whole bunch of leads. I'll be here to answer any questions or do any pre-approvals you need. But I'll bring drinks and food and all that. I mean, why not? The, the, the broker is going to look at you like, man, you're crazy. Probably not agree to it, but think that you're crazy and love the idea of it. And the outside-the-box thinking kind of brands you as very, very different, right? And that's the whole idea. Do a one-on-one -on -one once a week 
take a referral partner to lunch. That's a big one right there. That that by itself, that's a presentation type. That is absolutely a type of presentation when you're taking a referral partner to lunch. You're either one, asking for business, or two, solidifying their business. It's one or the other, and that's a sales presentation opportunity for you. Once a week, you should be taking a referral partner to lunch. And we talked about in that in the time blocking class as well, is schedule that in. Always be trying to take someone to lunch. Um, one of the things that you want to get in the habit of doing, don't always do your meetings in the exact same place. It gets mundane. It gets boring. The agents get bored with that sort of thing. So do it in unexpected places. Do it in places that the agents are, are really, there's a, there, what? A car dealership. The car dealer wants nothing more than to get the agents in there looking at their cars, but the agents, it's, it's so different from them. It's, you know, it's just something different. It takes them out of the realm of the norm. Brand you is different. A big one to do is like game places like Dave and Buster's. Again, if you're in a large town, you probably have a Dave and Buster's. It's a national franchise where they've got pretty darn good food on one side of the restaurant. The other side is nothing but a giant game room, like an adult version of Chuck E. Cheese. Give them some to do a 15-minute presentation, and then everybody gets some tokens to go unwind for a little bit. I guarantee you that will be talked about for months and months and months to come. Do a pavilion. Uh, at a at one of your local parks and set up a horseshoes um, set horseshoes up there or corn toss and and make a game of it have a contest um, and with a prize for the winner of the contest and everybody will enjoy themselves it's fun it's different it differentiates you from the rest of the crowd go to a driving range and have everybody hit a bucket of golf balls you know we, Answer a question, hit a ball, you know, hit, hit, be the first empty your bucket of balls and you win $100. Whatever, I mean, there's so many fun things that you could do that are more fun than just being in the office with the conference room. I got water pitchers with glasses over here, I got coffee over there, and I got canned soda over here, and oh, here's some... Here's some uh, cinnamon discs for you right there on your plate. Do something fun and different fun and different. Go to a picnic area and do your presentation in one of the gazebos at a picnic area with horseshoes or corn to That doesn't cost you anything more than setting up some free soda, some sodas and some coffee in your office. It doesn't cost you anything more and it's different enough to be fun to get them those people talking about and looking at you differently. The most of the biggest thing is have fun offer something cool and and meet a lot of new people a lot of new people and it's fun to do presentations are much more fun than picking up the phone and dialing if you ask my personal opinion and it, you get the same result you're meeting new people you're getting that opportunity to get a face to face again all the marketing that you do everything that you do marketing wise does nothing more than give you an opportunity to develop, to create and develop a relationship with that prospect, whether it's to real estate agents or clients. Marketing does nothing more than give you an opportunity to develop a relationship. Right? That's what these things do is it gives you, you know, presentations give you that opportunity the same way that dialing does, but to me it's a lot more fun. Now, some of the extras that you need to make sure that you have down pat if you're going to be doing some presentations of your own is make sure you have a handout. I, I think the number one handout is a copy of the PowerPoint or a summary and a place for them to take notes because what will happen by giving them some sort of a handout, it's something to remember them by you by first of all, but it'll get, it encourages them to engage with you because they're following along as you've got the presentation up on the big screen right in front of them or, or you're going through it, they're following along. And it's prompting them to ask a question. Hey, I, I, you said this back here. They'll engage with you if they have something in their hands, something tangible. If they're just sitting there and looking at you blankly with nothing, they're not going to engage with you. Very few will actually take notes. 
you'll notice if you give them something to take notes on, almost every one of them will take notes, and that's your visible visual indicator that people are engaged with what you're talking about if they're taking notes. Give them something to take notes, and a vast majority will take notes, and that, that taking notes by itself is a huge indicator that you've got them engaged, and that's what you're trying to do with this presentation is get them engaged with you to see you as different so that you get that opportunity to develop and create and develop that relationship, right? Uh, have a drawing at the end of your give, uh, at, at the end for some sort of a giveaway like a book, um, like a gift certificate to a local restaurant or a gift certificate to the restaurant you're at if you're doing a lunch and learn at one of the local restaurants. Lottery tickets are always a big fun one. Um, gas cards are huge right now, especially for people that work in their vehicles like real estate agents and you uh, obviously do. That's a big thing. Um, you know, have a little drawing. You know, drop your drop your card in the bowl for the drawing at the end of today's presentation. Somebody's going to win. You know, uh, a ten dollar gift certificate to Starbucks or a five day whatever it is. But have a little giveaway. Everyone loves to win. Another big thing to do is to have dollar store tchotchkes or a big pile of candy. You know, the little bite sized candy bars something easy that you can kind of toss around doesn't cost you much at all you can get you know I mean it doesn't cost you much at all and toss them around as as you're going through your presentation ask a question about it and whoever answers it toss them the tchotchke you know and as you're going through you ask the next question who answers it you toss them the tchotchke or hey who wants to participate with me okay what are the top three things that the you know ask a question during it and whoever participates they get the little tchotchke for participating it's fun it livens it up you're going to get everybody hoping that you call on them and so now everybody's engaged with you because even if even though it's a little tchotchke that it means nothing. Cost. It's not any big deal. It's a piece of candy, whatever. Everybody likes to get that little bit of something. It's just something about that little tchotchke, that little thing that you do during presentations that brings that. It it bonds you a little bit closer. It gets that engagement going a little bit more, and now we're starting to engage and we're becoming friends during our presentation just because we've. You know, we've exchanged this little thing. I gave you this little tchotchke. It was fun. You're having a good time. Remember what I said previously. When you're selling, it has nothing to do with what you said. It's how you made them feel. That's why people buy is based on the way that you make them feel. What you're doing in a presentation is you're selling yourself, hoping that the close of the deal or the payment of that deal is that opportunity to create and develop a personal one a personal you know referral partner relationship so you're selling here it's not about what you're saying it's about how you're making them feel give them opportunities during your presentations to feel like they're having fun I promise you that will sell them a lot more than the words you're saying or the strategy you're teaching um, <coughs> this is probably the single most important part is to make sure that the last slide of your presentation is your contact information. It's your chance to ask for business. This, you know, when you're doing a presentation, you absolutely have to focus on them. It's all about them. It is not about you. Even when you're doing a presentation on a specific loan program, you're educating them on the ins and outs of that. You're not telling them and oh by the way we do it better. That's bad form. You want to be it's all about them and educating them. That's what they're there for. The last slide is your chance to ask for the business. If you're giving a copy of the PowerPoint as a handout, as we mentioned a couple of slides earlier, make sure that this is included on your on your in that handout PowerPoint. Don't leave that off because it's your branding slide. That's the best one to include in the PowerPoint or in the handout 
because that's their reminder. And this is what what it looks like. And and I the same words each time is is what I was used says. Thanks for attending today's presentation. Please remember I am a mortgage professional first and foremost. Your referrals are always appreciated. And here's the thing, you don't have to read this slide during your presentation. You don't read it. You get to the end of your presentation, you know, and, and here's the thing, and the thing does the thing, and thank you so much, and, and, and the thing is the thing, and thank you so much for attending today. What questions do you guys have? And you leave this up behind you. If you've done the extra things, you've asked a couple of questions throughout your presentation, tossing out a tchotchke here and there. You've engaged them by giving them a handout and letting them know it's more than fine. Here's a pen. Take notes if you want. And they're engaged and they're asking questions and they're engaged with you. You don't have to read this part. They're looking over you as you're saying, thanks for attending. Do you guys have any questions? They're looking to see. Oh, there's that slide. Yep, I got it in my packet. Thank you for attending today's presentation. Please remember I'm a mortgage professional first and foremost. Refer oh, referrals are always appreciated. Who do I have that I could refer to him? Who do I have? You know what? Joan, looking over, looking at 212 Easy Street, I'm going to refer him to her and or her to him and, and see. Yeah, she's perfect. Great. She's looking to buy right now. I know he can help her. That's all there is. I mean, it. That's your opportunity to ask for business, and don't shy away from it. If you're doing presentations without a slide like this in your presentation, and you're not asking for business, you are missing out. Well, and so Peggy says that another way to phrase that: your introductions are appreciated. Absolutely, your referrals are always appreciated. Your introductions are appreciated that's a nice way to say that maybe I went for it a little a little hard there um, but the same kind of thing you absolutely have to have this at the end or you're losing your opportunity you're wasting your time doing the presentation if you're not asking for the business and the next step is to follow up after that you're gonna follow up follow up then follow up and then you're gonna follow up some more and then after that, do some follow-up. The key element, guys, I cannot stress it enough that the key element to doing presentations, to getting the, it's again, a way to give you opportunities to create and develop relationships. If you forget to follow up, all of that hard work and giving you that opportunity, it goes out the window. The opportunity will go with it. You absolutely have to take take the take the opportunity given to you and follow up and get those appointments. Part of the follow up is have a thank you letter or email. Thank you for attending email written. Have it pre written and ready to go. It's just a generic thank you for attending. You know you're going to send that anyway. Why not spend the extra couple of minutes and have it ready to go so that your follow up is done before you do your your presentations research your attendees to know who your main targets are so you can focus your follow-up efforts so if you did a presentation with the title company and 10 people showed up do a little research find out who those 10 people are if you see that three of the 10 are all are doing less than six transactions a year you know send them the email but don't focus on your calls on them you're going to focus on those big dog agents, those agents that are going to be able to help you create and, and do more business this year. Have your follow-up call scheduled and a script all planned out, all ready to go. Have it pre-written script and, and go through the script the way that we've talked about here on the Daily Mastermind where you've planned out exactly what your benefits are. Not your features, but your benefits, why you're calling them. Have planned out what your goal of your call is. Know in advance exactly how you're going to ask that call to action. Know what objections may come and how you'll overcome them when, you, when they do come. Have that pre-written and planned out and ready to go so that it's an easy follow-up process, so that it flows just one step into the next because if you 
do a presentation and then at the end of the presentation you start thinking, oh, and I need to send an email to all the attendees. And you sit down and you start writing that email. Guess what happens? It's not a very well thought out email because you're in a hurry to get it out because you, 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 know, you know the timely. You want to be timely with it. Then you pick up the phone and you're calling hard on every single one of the attendees and one of them bites and they're interested and lo and behold they haven't had a buyer transaction in five months but they're looking for one as soon as they get one they'll be happy to forward it over to you right schedule those calls have a plan of attack in place before you start your attack getting started with it the f so when you first do this a little word of advice or a word of warning, please understand the first few times that you do a presentation like this, you are, you're going to have a very low attendance. It's going to be two, maybe three, one, two, three, four people showing up to your first few. You cannot lose the consistency in doing it. The more consistent you are, the higher number of attendees you'll get each week because it goes back to that credibility and believability. You have to you have to differentiate yourself with the agents and you have to through consistency show the agents that what you're doing, the classes that you're teaching, the fact that you're an expert and that you teach classes, it's consistent and it's credible because you've been doing it X number of times. Well, if he's done it this long, I mean, he's still doing it. must be something. What am I missing? You've got to make sure you stay consistent. You cannot just do one and done. And, and to stay consistent, there's an easy formula for that. Every week, one one-on-one. -on -one. Every month, one group presentation. It can be one lunch and learn. It can be one wine tasting. Whatever's easiest for you, but do it at least once a month and you will remain consistent. Partner with a title rep to do it. We talked about a little bit about this earlier. Have them invite the agents and you provide the content. That's the easy thing to do it, but if you are going to partner with a title rep, you need to go prepared when you approach them. Have a date, a time, and a topic already in mind. I have talked to more than enough loan officers in 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 one-on-one -on -one coaching where we've said, "Hey, I'm going to start doing presentations." Well, how do I get started? Okay, you you want let's partner with a title rep. Here's what I want you to do. Let's go get a title rep involved on it. It's, you know, let's talk about getting a class going. Come back the next one-on-one -on -one coaching. Okay. Paul, I talked to a title rep. They're ready. They're all excited. They said they'll let me, you know, they're they're they said they would love to do something like this. They'd love to do something like this. Great. When do you have it scheduled? Oh, well, we didn't talk about that. They just said they'd love to do something like this, and I told them I'd follow up. Okay. So when they follow up, you know, you, you start to have a plan. In, it, if you want to make it happen, here's what you do. You approach the title rep with, hey, title rep, I'm going to be doing a class on how to create a Facebook uh, real estate specific Facebook fan page for each listing. I'm doing it on the 3rd of September at 1 o'clock p.m. I would love to partner with you on this. Would you like to do it? You've given them a specific date, time, topic. They say, yes, I'd love to do it, not, oh, we'll think about it. Oh, it sounds interesting. Give me some more details. Now you're waiting, now you're having to come back and it's back and forth and nothing gets implemented where if you come to them with a specific date, time, and topic, they will commit to that. They very high percentage make a commitment right then and there and a lot of times they'll actually, you can set a schedule with them based on that just that one presentation, you can set an ongoing schedule with them. Um, as far as getting a presentation, take a presentation you have access to already. Guys, girls, I, I don't reinvent wheels. You know, don't go out there, you know, creating your own 
things or creating your own presentation materials, especially if you're going to get consistent and you're going to do this often, things that are going to help the real estate agent to grow their business. Well, create that stuff yourself. You can if you'd like to. There's some easy ways to do it, and I'll be more than happy to guide you through some of those easy ways, and, and we'll talk about some of that stuff as the week goes on this week. But to, to jump right in and to get started with it, just go and take a PowerPoint that you already have access to. On the daily mastermind class list, I just kind of browsed through and found three pretty quickly. You've got your 30-second elevator speed. It's a great class to present to real estate agents. You've got your video marketing basics. I mean, that, that's a no-brainer. That's so easy to do, and agents absolutely know they should be doing video. They just have no clue how. Teach them how to do, you know, Facebook ads decoded. That is a great, easy class to convert to real estate agents. Just take it, download it, and adapt it to yourself. Edit it to become your own. And uh, become the expert. Everyone wants to work with the expert. Let's face it. If I am a real estate agent, you're the same. If you're a real estate agent and you've got a a, a veteran standing in front of you, are you going to call your regular lender or are you going to call the VA loan expert? You're going to call the, the person you look to as an expert. Become an expert on multiple things and you'll be looked at as that expert and uh, every, like I said, everybody wants to work with who they perceive to be higher or better or an, a notch above themselves. They want to work with those people they perceive to be at the top of their game, not the middle of the road or everybody in the pool people. Does that make sense? All right, that I believe, yep, that's everything. What, uh, what questions do we have about today's presentations on presentations? Any questions on presentations about presentations? And like I said to you guys, um, we're going to focus on this this week. Tomorrow we're going to talk a lot about different uh, places to get presentations, how to kind of come up with and create your own presentations if you're looking to do that, how to utilize PowerPoint to, to be able to do it. So we'll get into some of the techie side of stuff tomorrow um, and then – and then go from there, see where else we need to go. But what questions do we have today? Any? Any? And it doesn't, guys, just so you know, when it's question side, it doesn't necessarily have to be about um, what we covered today. That's funny. Remember what I said on slide number, um, yeah, slide number three here on the coffee and questions. Be prepared to prompt people with questions. <laughs> Sometimes you will say, okay, what questions do we have? And you get crickets. Uh, I wrote through, ooh, okay, Jeff says, I wrote three books back in the early 80s, got them approved for um, CE credit in California. Only got 18 units of the 45 we needed back then. Shortly thereafter, companies came out with full 45 units for cheaper than my 18. Oh, well. Not sure what that, the units, oh, okay, units of credit units, got it. Ours are done by hours. But that's awesome. Rewrite those books, man. Turn them into a CE present, is, turn them into a CE credits class that you can teach live. And then it doesn't matter how much you charge. Then it's just what whatever the school charges, 25 bucks, 11 bucks, whatever it, whatever it costs. All right, guys. Well, if there are no questions on today's thing, I'm going to I'm got 10 extra minutes here. So um, I'm going to wrap it up a couple of minutes early. I appreciate everybody joining me today. I hope you learned a little something. Um, like I said, we are going to kind of stay focused this week on presentations. Um, it is a huge, huge way to differentiate yourself first and foremost from the real to, from the rest of the loan officers um, because not everybody's doing it. Only a very small percentage are. Secondly, it brands you as an expert in what it is that you're talking about, and and there is just 
something about that expert status. People want to work with who they perceive to be better or more knowing than they are in a subject. So it, it's just it's benefits all around the board. It introduces you to new people. It gets you out and about. It gets you face to face so people get to know you more. Um, there's just benefits galore with doing presentations. Um, and, and I'm hoping to help you start doing presentations of your own. Guys, girls, that's it for today. Join me tomorrow. Again, we're going to talk a little bit more about presentations, how to create them, um, utilize PowerPoint for them, how to edit PowerPoints to make a, a, any presentation become your own. I'm even going to give you a super secret ninja site to be able to go and find presentations that for any subject you want, you want a presentation on. Guys, girls, that is it. Hope you have a fantastic rest of your day. And I look forward to seeing you right back here, same time, same place tomorrow. Have a great day, everybody. See you on the flip side.